plastic anemia is a disease that's defined by poor production of blood cells from your bone marrow. Uh, it's a rare blood disease, but I would say that about half of the cases of aplastic anemia occur in children. So if your child were to come to our center, we would think about treating uh, aplastic anemia in one of two ways. The first way is with immune suppression therapy. Uh, and uh, that therapy consists of a combination of antithymocyte globulin, or ATG, plus cyclosporin. Uh, in recent years, uh, there have also been uh, studies that have looked at the addition of a medicine called Ultrombopag to that regimen. Uh, the second way that we can treat aplastic anemia is with bone marrow transplant. Uh, and recently, uh, we've been reevaluating uh, which patients will get which therapies. Um, uh, generally, if we have a matched sibling donor available uh, for a patient who has pediatric aplastic anemia, that's our first line therapy. Uh, and uh, traditionally, if a sibling donor isn't available, uh, we would use immune suppression therapy first and only go to alternative donor uh, bone marrow transplantation strategies if immune suppression therapy was ineffective. NAPAC is the North American Pediatric Aplastic Anemia Consortium. Uh, it was founded within the last decade uh, by a number of leading pediatric physician researchers uh, with expertise in bone marrow failure syndromes. And the mission is really to promote uh, new research initiatives to improve therapy outcomes for patients with acquired aplastic anemia. The impact so far of NAPAC is it's really brought together uh, most of the large pediatric centers in the United States. Uh, and our initiatives so far are working towards standardizing the treatment approaches for pediatric aplastic anemia. And we've also uh, begun a number of both retrospective and prospective clinical studies uh, to try to improve outcomes. When I see patients with pediatric onset aplastic anemia, if they have a fully matched sibling for bone marrow transplant, we know that that is the best option for initial therapy for them. But the real challenge in pediatric aplastic anemia is for those patients who don't have a matched sibling donor for transplant. The initial study through NAPAC has brought together all of our member institutions to conduct a retrospective study looking back at what our outcomes are for patients who have been treated with immune suppression therapy for over a decade. And this has led to an analysis of over 300 patients with pediatric uh, onset aplastic anemia. Uh, and what we've found so far is that outcomes compared to most previous studies that have been conducted in adults may be quite different. We may see a better response to initial immune suppression therapy uh, than in uh, previous publications. And we may see quite different patterns of clonal evolution or progression of aplastic anemia to diseases like MDS and leukemia. One of the challenges when we see patients with pediatric aplastic anemia who don't have matched sibling donor, donors for transplant is we know that the risks and outcomes for patients who received their first therapy as immune suppression therapy are different than uh, the risks and outcomes for patients who received their first therapy potentially as unrelated donor bone marrow transplant. And there have been recent studies uh, from Europe that suggest that unrelated donor bone marrow transplant may be superior for these patients versus immune suppression therapy. But historically, in North America, immune suppression therapy has been the first line treatment for those patients. So currently, through NAPAC and in collaboration with the Pediatric Blood and Marrow Transplant Consortium, uh, we're conducting a pilot feasibility study headed by Mike Pulsifer to look at the feasibility of being able to perform a randomized prospective clinical trial for patients with pediatric onset aplastic anemia who don't have matched sibling donors to try to determine whether initial therapy with unrelated donor bone marrow transplant or immune suppression therapy is superior.
we were fortunate uh, in that uh, in the current era, patients with pediatric onset aplastic anemia do very well with therapy. But it's critical that patients and families maintain long-term follow-up in centers that have expertise uh, in looking at the long-term impacts of treatment uh, for patients with pediatric aplastic anemia. And it's important to recognize that the long-term implications and medical issues that can arise are, are dependent upon which type of therapy patients received, whether they received immune suppression therapy or whether they received uh, bone marrow transplantation. Uh, for parents and, and families who are interested in accessing uh, this expertise, there are a number of resources available, both through the AAMDSIF website and also through the NAPAAC website or the NAPAC website. Um, there you can find contact information for a number of uh, centers who have expertise with pediatric onset of plastic anemia.